Well, that's frustrating. Just recorded four minutes. Thought it was going well. And then the video is not even recording. <laughs> Welcome back, ladies and gents. Colin Stuckert here, the Wild CEO, for another video on something that's going to help you, hopefully. No matter where you're seeing this, I'm actually going to simulcast this. This is going to go on the Escaping for Jilly podcast, my new show. And it's going to go on my main YouTube and the Ancestral Mind podcast. You can get links to everything at colin.coach. You can subscribe to all the respective shows and get all the content. My main show, mostly around health, mindset, and personal development type stuff. Escaping Fragility, there's a little bit of that in there. There's a little bit of mindset. There's some bias stuff, but there's also a lot of plan B, buying gold, buying silver, how to be a sovereign free individual, and a little bit of politics every so often when I see just some of the absurdity that's going on in 2020, I like to cover it there. So today's quote is one of my favorite quotes by Emerson. It is something that is so important. It's also hard to act on. And depending on where you're at in your life, it might be more applicable to now or later or earlier. The quote is, to be yourself in a world that is constantly trying to make you something else is the greatest accomplishment. Ralph Waldo Emerson. So to be yourself, when the world's trying to make you something else, when people are trying to make you something else, is the greatest accomplishment. Like, why is that though? Now, here's the thing. Everybody struggles with self-confidence. Everybody struggles with the, who am I to say anything? Who am I to have a YouTube or a podcast or multiple or anything? Who am I to have people listen to me about anything, right? I get it. I've gone through all that evolution when I started posting stuff on social media. Most people still are afraid to go on their Instagram like this and just like record something. Like I can do this all day long. In fact, I probably do too much. <laughs> we all struggle with that. There's no permission. There's no gatekeepers. Nobody has to tell you you're good enough other than you. And here's the thing. If you think you're not worthy or you don't have anything to say or whatever, let me just remind you of something. Nobody in the history of planet Earth, mankind, or in the future is ever going to have your unique set of experiences, of skills, of, of, ever, of everything, everything. You are the only you that there will ever be. And guess what? 99.99% .99 of humans never really go out there and share their gifts with the world because they're too afraid. And as Thoreau said, they live lives of quiet desperation and they go to the grave with their songs still inside them, which is sad. Now we have this amazing thing called the internet and we, you literally go on your phone and broadcast anything. You talk about anything. Now think about this for a second. If you were in a room of 10 people and you're sitting on a chair, you're giving a little speech on something or presentation, maybe you got like a whiteboard like this and you're showing people something or motivating them or teaching them something or whatever. If those 10 people got value after your little talk or presentation or show, and they came up to you and said, oh, that was awesome. Thank you so much, whatever. Or even if it was a few people got value out of it, would you feel like that was a success? Was that a good use of your time? Would you feel happy about that outcome? Most people, as long as they didn't bomb and they got some good feedback, would probably be content and or happy with that outcome. If I put a video on YouTube and it gets 10 views, and let's say it gets like five likes out of that 10 views, like 50% ratio. It's actually kind of high. But that video got 10 views forever. And I can tell you right now, because I've been doing YouTube for a while, and even when I got videos that do hundreds of views, I sometimes feel that pang of feeling not enough people saw the video. But the reality is, if I break it down and think about it, 10 people, if they got value, they liked it, they enjoyed my video, it was worth the time and effort. It really was. That's how you got to think about it. Don't worry about these massive numbers. Don't compare yourself to these big social media stars or whatever. If you can, and, I, and you can, everybody can, you can help somebody, you can teach them something, you should do that. And then appreciate and have confidence in your ability to do that. Now, I know it's a little bit off topic for this, this quote, but it, it's just a way of thinking about who you are and having the confidence in who you are. I mean, you really are a unique snowflake, but not in a bad way. Like we're all unique snowflakes, but not all of us appreciate that or understand that of ourselves. A lot of us have doubts and fears and whatever. And again, we live lives of quiet desperation, going to the grave with our songs still inside us, as Thoreau said. It's not good to do that. You know one of the top regrets of the dying? One of the top five regrets of the dying. I wish I wouldn't have lived my life for other people. I wish I would have lived for myself. Can you imagine that? You end your life and you did a bunch of things. Some people, their entire lives did things that was for other people that ultimately didn't really care. Like even your parents, they want the best for you, whatever. Maybe they want you to do a certain thing. But if you didn't do it, they're going to move on. They're going to they're gonna get over it. They all do. Everybody does. Your partners, your friends, family, whatever. And if they really, really won't move on, then you don't, they don't need to be in your life. I know it's a bitter pill to swallow, but it's true. 
you get one chance at this life. You get one shot. And if people really care about you, they want you to be happy. So maybe that means not being a lawyer or a doctor, or going into massive debt and going to school for 10 years to do something to live up to your parents' ideals or grandparents' ideals or whatever, or some legacy of the family or whatever. If it's not what you want to do, don't do it. Now, I believe in this, this concept known as egoism. It's either, either egoism or egotism. Maybe somebody can correct me in the comments. It's like one of the only things I remember in community college that I went to for like a year. It's this idea that everybody does something for themselves. We are all first selfish creatures. I totally agree with this. I totally buy into this because even if you give your life for someone else, if you're a martyr or you save someone else's life, you did it because you wanted to. You did it for yourself. If you commit your life to serving the poor, you're doing it for yourself. You do it because you want to. What that means is if you're doing things for other people, you're doing it because you're likely afraid of their negative response. And then maybe a small part of you wants to like please them or whatever. But I guarantee you it's more from fear. And anything in life that is causing behavior from fear is always, always the wrong path to take. It's always the wrong decision to make. And it's always going to come back to bite you. Regret is going to bite you in the face. We need more people that are willing to rock the boat, to be honest. In fact, here's a quick little story. I'll let you go after this because we're already 80 minutes. So we just had our second son, second addition to the family. It happened last week. We had a home birth, natural birth. So we had a doula and midwives come here. The doula came for follow-up visit. And I was here through the whole thing. I, I wasn't in the room the whole time or anything. I mean, we're talking like a 30-hour ordeal, which is just simply incredible. And I will say every female on the planet that goes through that, you have my absolute gratitude and massive respect. <laughs> because I told the doula when she asked me, well, how was the experience for you? And I said, well, honestly, I'm just sitting here thinking, I'm just really glad I don't have to go through this. And she kind of laughed like, well, at least he's honest. And Allison didn't even bat an eye. Like, this is who I am. Like, I, I say, I tell the truth. Wow, big freaking surprise. I say what I mean. I mean what I say and I tell the truth. Holy shit. In our modern, fragile PC culture, can you believe that anybody does that? It's sad that that's the way it is. It's sad that people are surprised when you're just straight up and honest and tell the truth. But it's also something I'm extremely proud of and I try to embrace as much as possible. And that means even saying things when they're unpleasant. That means giving feedback when they maybe don't want to hear it. Being honest. Not being worried about ruffling feathers. Not being worried about what somebody may say, think, feel, whatever. Because what you do when you sugarcoat things, walk on eggshells, or all the crap in 2020, write these absurd laws like calling names hate speech and, and, and trying to mitigate anything anybody says so that nobody's offended. What you get is a fragile culture. What you get is a removal of truth. And in fact, I will, I will leave you with this. I don't want to go into this, but this was kind of on my mind. I thought about it. The reason I think a lot of this stuff about racism is so off target is because of, of an example that I'm going to just give. It's a hypothetical example. This wouldn't happen always. But I could see this happening quite a bit, okay? You see a lot of this kind of shaming of white people going on right now. Yeah, there's inequality, there's racism, the, there's police brutality. They kill lots of people every year, white and black and Asian and everything. And I'm not really happy about that. I think the police need to be demil demilitarized. I don't think the police need to be disbanded. I think we just need a better system, more training, more checks and balances, et cetera. That's all I'll say on that. We have a lot of this shaming culture. We have a lot of this where white people are basically the bad guy at this point just because of the color of their skin, which in my opinion is racism. I mean, that's just straight racism. That's what it is. You're, you're defining a whole group of people and or blaming them or doing something based on the color of their skin, knowing nothing about their character and knowing nothing about what they believe or what they've done or haven't done. That's racism. That's prejudice. Let's just assume this keeps going. What you're going to see as you have all this anti-racism training nonsense and you have these things infect corp corporate culture, well, what's going to happen to those black people that are in these companies that are majorly white that have white bosses, white coworkers, whatever. And all those people are afraid to give potentially negative feedback to this person that has black skin because maybe they're afraid somebody's going to say it's racism. Maybe they're afraid the person receiving is going to say it's racist. Maybe somebody else is going to say it's racist. Who is hurt the most in that situation? I want you to think about that a second. Who do you think is hurt the most? Is it the white people that can't express themselves? Is it those people that are going to be hurt the most? Or is it the person that's not receiving 
the feedback because that person doesn't get feedback. That person doesn't get a chance to improve or to be aware or learn anything, right? Doesn't get feedback from their workplace, their job, their career. They eventually get cut or fired because nobody opened their damn mouth to tell them. Now tell me how that is going to be a good outcome. It's not. It's going to be worse. And I and, I, and I'm going to, I guarantee you we're going to be seeing it more and more. It might even be one of those things that'll almost be like a ghost that you can't really identify because everybody will be so fragile and afraid and nobody will say it. I guarantee you, you're going to see a lot of black professionals that are just going to be like, yeah, I lost my job and I, I don't know why. Nobody said anything to me. Or they like listed off all these things about my performance and they said it's been going on for six months and nobody told me. And like in that case, that person, I mean, I feel like they would have a legitimate maybe lawsuit or claim or whatever. Like that's that's effed up to not get feedback that about your job, about what you're doing. That is effed up. That's how we all improve. We get feedback from the freaking world. And then we iterate with that feedback or we do the same damn thing and we don't and we lose our job or we have the repercussions or whatever. That's the way the world works. That's why so much of this racism stuff tries to remove the reality. And all that's going to do is going to hurt the very people that it's apparently protecting, even though I don't think it is actually protecting anybody. It's just one of those examples of like, you might have like white supremacists that might be like 0.001% of the population or whatever. Yeah, sure, they exist. Nazis exist. There's still people that like have gatherings that they probably exist. They're probably underground. But those people are not a problem for 90, 90, 90, 99% of people. They're not a problem in 99% of workplaces. They're not a problem for 99% of the interactions online. They're not a problem for 99.999% of the interactions of people just out and about in life. Yet the idea that they are so dangerous and it's so prevalent and it's all built into these systems or whatever has become the narrative. And again, it's going to create more divide, more divisiveness. It's going to make more of a fragile PC culture. More people are going to be, what's the word? More people are going to be stifled. More people are going to be held back because of this, because they're not going to get the valuable feedback from the world. And that's a damn shame. And that's about as unequal as you can freaking get, aside from, you know, obviously slavery and that kind of crap. I know the quote was to be yourself in a world that is constantly trying to make you something else, the greatest accomplishment, and somehow it took a turn. <laughs> Let me know what you think about this. Let me know what you think about the main quote or maybe even the last topic. I'm curious to hear maybe a counter argument because I could see that happening. And it's one of those examples of people yelling about problems, being angry and outraged about the imperfection of the world, and then kind of ignoring the solutions or coming up with these half-assed absurd solutions like anti-racism training and all the, like just complete absurdity, really, with no scientific backing whatsoever. It's all that crap. <laughs> Subscribe, comment, do those things if you want. If you don't, I don't know, just think better, live better. Ask yourself questions, be more aware, help your family, be healthy. I'll see you in the next one.